Good morning and welcome to Baala Monday. Absolutely brilliant to be with you today. Rhoda is here as always on a Monday morning. Welcome everybody and welcome Dugo. Yeah. Welcome to Mahala Monday everybody out there. And I'm hoping that information today will be able to help you set your week for this week. <laughs> it certainly will. Because we're talking money. Yes, that's right, that's right. You know, money, insurance, life cover, you name it. Yeah. So, yeah, quite interesting show, you know. But how was your weekend, Dougal? No, it was good. It was good. Month of love and all of that. <laughs> so, uh, hence we've decided <laughs> it is money. You've got to talk about the things that uh, is that important matters. to you. Yeah, so, true, and true. I jokingly say money because <laughs> uh, I, I really joke when I say this because uh, what we're talking about is something that is super, super important, isn't it? It is. So, yes. and, and let's get let's get it straight in there because uh, th this is something that, that we all got to look at uh, from a personal perspective but also today we're bringing in the entrepreneurs really so mm. businesses whether it's a small medium a big business oh, yeah. when it comes to insurance and financial services well uh, the success of your company really really depends on it oh, and yeah. we're going to talk to some amazing people who do this and one person is joining us but Rhoda, before yeah. we introduce or we really get into what we're talking about today let me just put it out there that this is an interactive show so we welcome and look forward to your comments and questions and of course the details at the bottom of your screen so as you're watching this on youtube or facebook uh at nikkei productions that's where you find us and i'll definitely definitely put uh, some questions or comments along because we'll pose that to exactly. the person who's joining us oh, and yeah. we're talking to tobias trade up that is right welcome tobias and he is from octofen welcome to mahala monday it's a great privilege to be talking to you today and hopefully i can add some value yeah, no, you certainly will, you Tobias. Certainly will. Absolutely wonderful to have you along. But before before we get in, so what we do know is uh, that Octofin, obviously, you are a registered financial services provider and uh, you do all sorts of insurance from uh, long term to short term, whether it's to do with medical aids, pension funds, all of this. Uh, th this is basically all in the wheelhouse of, the, of your company. That's correct. Yeah, we have a property development side. We have a lot of stakeholders that has, um, we're also in the banking industry. Uh, we have, we are an authorized financial services provider. Like, like you said, we provide life, non-life insurance, including short-term insurance, um, investment, pension funds, and medical aid. All right, so there's quite quite a bit because this is really what we want to talk about because this is, and dare I actually say, it's a bit of a hot topic. It is. It's, it's a bit of a hot potato throughout society. I mean, we, we, we're basically still within the throes of a pandemic. Mm. That, of course, changed significantly mm. when we went into lockdown in the first time because all of a sudden insurance either became the saving grace or it became a very taboo word throughout oh, yeah. society. And I, I wouldn't even just assume that for, for, for our environment immediately but I would I would want to assume that globally so I want to I want to what is what is before we really get into it because I know there's lots of people who've, who've got who've got businesses and uh, who's looking at insurance in terms of a product okay uh, whether that doesn't matter the size of your business because mm -hmm. business owners are probably asking what is there that we can insure within the business? You know, yeah. and, 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 I mean, you're a business owner. Do you yeah. think that? Almost definitely, Dougal. And, you know, especially with us being obviously, you know, live streaming photography, um, you know, all of the above. When we go on site, our equipment needs to be insured. So you need to look at that as well. Mm. So there's quite a bit involved. And you know what? I mean, that's why we've got the experts here to explain yeah. exactly what needs to and what, you know, what's important at the end of the day. Yeah. So Tobias, let's get you in here because as you can see, the scene is now set. This is going to be quite a, a bit of a, a, a hot, 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 hot potato as well. <laughs> and I know lots of people are watching this as well. <laughs> and we want to say hi to some of them as well because I know the questions are definitely going to flood in as well. So so, uh, Rhoda, you, you do the, the touchy one? there. I just want to say hi. Because uh, Peter Erasmus is watching this from Graaf Reynet uh, out of the Eastern Cape. Peter, good morning. Hope you are lekker, man. And I uh, hope everybody <laughs> is well there in uh, Graaf Reynet. So, uh, Peter is watching this. Uh, there's also some other people watching us. He's, he's, he's saying, how's yeah. it? And uh, we, will, we will greet all of you as we go in with it. But, uh, Tobias, let, let's start off. So, we kind of have a basic idea of of what it is that you offer. Now, we, we're going to talk with you short-term insurance, yes? That's correct, yes, short-term okay. insurance. Perfect. Now, what, what exactly is short-term insurance and long-term insurance? What I like about the perception of short-term insurance is that we sometimes need to take a step back, and this is for any business owner, 
and firstly understand what the concept of risk is because when you do it, do that you will have a better understanding of where insurance plays a role in your risk management process for your business so google if i can ask you what do you understand under the concept of risk do you have a negative or, or a positive connotation to that word well negative all the way uh <laughs> there's no yeah there's no uh, I, I, well, when you put it that way, I'm trying to define what would be a positive risk. That all depends on the outcome. You know what I mean? If I'm doing a gamble or, or something like that. But in terms of risk, it's a, it's, it's, it's a negative thing on paper everywhere. 100%. And if I can look at a definition of, of risk can be defined as the effect of uncertainty on your objective. Wow. So at the end of the day, it's so important that a business knows exactly what their objectives are and that this is codified and written down and then identify those risks and uncertainties that can prevent the business from achieving those objectives. So in essence, insurance is one of a few methodologies that can be, uh, that's available for treating the risk by transferring it to insurance. When in fact, when you identify the risk or the uncertainties, um, you can there's different risk responses available. Um, you can either accept the risk, uh, avoid the risk, remove the source of the risk, you can change the likelihood, change the consequence, or you can transfer that risk to an insurer. And I think if you understand that insurance is only one of the last steps in a risk management procedure, that is going to, to definitely change your relationship with it. Because what, what it does is if you understand your risk, you can really use insurance as a tool and it's not necessary to throw premium at everything you have when you um, manage your risk correctly. Yeah, so so it really comes down to, as you say, risk management. You understand your business, you know what what what, what is whatever you have to, to operate your business, which is uh, costly or whether it isn't, you know, the, 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 let's call it the equipment, the things, everything you need to remain profitable within your organization. I understand. Rada, let's, let's take your business. I, I think you're in, in photography. Photography and live streaming, and yes. So obviously your equipment is very expensive. That's something you want to ensure away from mm. the premises. There are extensions available in business or the electronic um, section that you can ensure that. But most importantly for me, when it comes to commercial insurance is the liability side. Mm. Yesterday, I saw a, a truck dr driven into a Lamborghini in, oh. in Brazil Natal with 3 million rand. Now you can imagine yourself, I'd rather lose a camera than one of my drivers drive into a Lamborghini and I get out responsible for 3 million rand. So liability insurance is one of the cheapest parts of an insurance policy and it gets overlooked. I think that is a very good starting point to make sure that you have the right uh, liability cover in place for your business. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So, think of it, eh? and, and do we find in your experience that most businesses have that? As a rule, that is something that I definitely put on the policies that I underwrite. Um, and I don't even, I don't want to negotiate about liability. <laughs> so it's always up to the client to decide, but it will be so, it will be very ignorant to, to ignore that section. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and especially, you know, with all the blood, sweat and tears that you mm. pour into your organization exactly. and your business. And especially if you're an entrepreneur, you got to cover your bases, right, Rhoda? Exactly. Because you do. This is, and I just want to steer to, to quickly to Rhoda and put her on the spot. <laughs> Sorry, Tobias. Um, but but, but you, you, you do that. Yes, I have to do. You know what? Everything has to be covered because... Mm that is your bread and butter that is your business so if you don't have it covered and i need to have say camera drops now i mean geez anything can happen god willing it won't but you know what i need to have it covered so then i can then go to my insurance and say, okay there we go I have my premiums up to date you know i need a new camera otherwise business stops and yeah. i mean i'm just listening to toby now regarding tobias regarding the lamborghini i'm like whoa you know, that's something you don't think of because that's extra cost. I mean, that you dream and consider or think of because your driver's going out and he knocks a Lamborghini. Wow. Mm. I even I even think of it like that. But as yeah, soon as you, you said to. it, you said it was three million. <laughs> my thought was like, yo, the truck is expensive. But uh, and that, that, that really, because the truck probably don't even have a scratch. Eh? <laughs> probably doesn't yeah. even have a All scratch. All right, but let's hope everybody is cool. But uh, Tobias, let, let's, let me ask you this. Is it? Are there advantages for a business to make use of a broker like yourself? Because a lot of businesses might not even understand their risks. I mean, case mm. in point, 
the pandemic. Nobody saw that coming. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I think it's a very good question because I think when I started in the industry, I never realized the, the true role of a broker. And working for a few years, I can definitely say, and only speaking from Octopan's perspective, I can probably break it up into two parts. First of all, um, we are an independent brokerage uh, with agencies with the biggest insurance in South Africa. And therefore, we can give objective advice, source various solutions, and ensure market-related premium. So in addition, the broker model also ensures extra due diligence when it comes to understanding your policy and the conditions. And it also gives you that someone in your corner when you really need to fight the claim rejection mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and need to go to the owner. So it's good to have that. Secondly, I think we really have one of the most caring and competent staff that's willing to go beyond expectations to assist. And because our client has names and that relationship and that if it isn't subject to an active policy number, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So so it covers all and uh, it covers really a whole thing. And, and and I can understand the fact with a broker because you have a bit of a relationship. Do you know what I mean? There's like there's a bit of a name and a face to the mm. whole thing. Yes, hundred percent. I, if I can tell you how many calls I get on a weekend, <laughs> not to discuss insurance, but we really have that 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 relationship with our clients, and that's something I really enjoy from the broker model that you won't get from from direct insurance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I, I must comment on that as well because you know what, just myself also obviously in the business. I mean, my relationship um, broker basically, if I'm not mistaken, we're looking at about 10, 15 years. Um, so it's a long relationship and it's a trust factor as far as I'm concerned, uh, am I correct over Because I mean, you're putting your life into, I'm putting my life into your hands and I expect you to be able to handle exactly when I get into a situation that you'll be able to be there for me. 100%, 100%. And Rona, what, what, what beneficial of that long relationship is that client gets to know you as a person. She or he can service you yeah. the way you like and they understand your, your business and your risk. And I definitely make a point of it to, to go and visit the clients as most as, uh, you know, as frequently as possible so that you can see what has changed because in a year, a lot of things can change. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, within a business. And we don't always get informed of everything. And it's very important that, that you have that relationship. I was I was actually going to ask you because businesses grow, they develop or they scale down, and and the the, the product offering would be different. Then they they might be, they might have something that they don't really need, or they might need to get something else which they don't currently have. Exactly. And and also with being a broker, I mean, everyday products get developed, new oh, yeah. things come to market uh, that you obviously uh, are kept well abreast of, and that you inform your your customers. Definitely. It's so important that you do constant research, research for solutions. I think if I can use a practical example, one of the, the biggest problems that we, we had last year was to, to get, a, get cover for schools in case of emergency. And one has a product now, I'm, I'm going to use their name, but they have an emergency assist product, which, in, which ensures that teachers have a panic button on their phone wow. that you can push in. And that, if a, if a child gets hurt on the premises, it's panic stations. Not everybody knows who has medical aid, where can we take him. This product ensures that if you press that button, there's a 60 second response time, you can take him to a private hospital and that, that cost will be covered whether or not you have medical oh, aid wow. cover. And that's a practical solution that even though, and it's very cheap cover, but that provides value for a client. And um, yeah. that's, what we, that, that's what we do as, as brokers. Yeah. You can sort these well, you know what? We, we, we've got a couple of comments and, yep. uh, that, yeah. uh, that Rhoda is going to focus on. But I want to I wanna just say this because uh, after this, we just look at a comment or two because I know there's many misconceptions and perceptions about the insurance industry. I want to talk to, about uh, that as well. Oh, yeah. And especially once, once the pandemic started because I am sure... Because all I heard was complaints about the insurance <laughs> company. So we are going to touch base on that. And if you've got anything, then well... You know, maybe you want to add it, but there's a couple of questions and comments in Toby uh, that we just want to want to uh, get in the way. And uh, Tobias Tradom, of course, with us. So yeah. uh, Hubert Paul said something here, yeah? Rhoda. Yeah, life insurance sounds so morbid. Why don't they call it life insurance? <laughs> love insurance. Oh my gosh, the month of love. <laughs> we buy it because we want to leave a legacy for those we love. 
and then he says as well, rather have the insurance um, and not need it than need it and not have it. And this is very applicable to SM SMEs. Wow. Oh, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and do you know what, Tobias, uh, if you could just comment on that, because that is exactly what you were saying a short while ago. Um, your business might change. Uh, all of a sudden, if you're a small, medium business, the certain insurance oh, that yeah. you have, you might not even need because your business is has moved and I mean and especially and I want to bring the pandemic in here as well a lot of business has been happening online so oh, yeah. all of a sudden structural things mm. are no longer applicable but also businesses are scaled down and all of a sudden business is expanded so it's a constant it's a constant development it is something that is constant moving along isn't it that's 100 percent you're hitting the nail on the head there there's a reason why we need to renew policies annually and as a broker, and even as an insurer, you actually have the duty to ensure that you have contact with your client and um, communicate with him what changes has taken place. And um, more, I think the most practical thing is to visit your client because they are not always educated in giving you the right information. They think if they pay premium, everything is covered. But if you change premises, that's a change of material risk information, anything that changes the, the premium being asked for gives cause for a claim to mm. be rejected. So I think an open line of communication, whether it's via WhatsApp or phone call, we have Zoom, and communication has never been so simple, and yet we neglect to, to communicate. I hate um, emails, and um, I think <laughs> not a lot of emails get, get written, so I'd rather give a call or, or a visit. It might be a bit more financially straining, but it definitely adds more value to a client's um, business. Yeah, and I suppose that comes down to what you were saying earlier. It's one of the benefits of having an actual broker. You know, there's somebody who, who, who you can uh, get in touch with. But there's loads of comments, and Rhoda is still uh, well. busy with him. So who do we have next, Rhoda? Um, I do believe there's Anthony Buerta, and he says... Um, Good morning, and he says the cover is important. If my clients know I have the insurance in place, it gives them the peace of mind dealing with him. So, yeah, that's again the liability we spoke about earlier. Yeah. So, obviously, as he says, um, that if he does, if his client knows about it, obviously it makes his client um, excited about it as well, and they know they're covered. And then we got mm -hmm. Danelle Conradi. Good morning, extended family and Tobias. Well done on an ex excellent topic and showcasing a brilliant company. They are definitely the go-to in the industry, always goes above and beyond. Oh, ah, look at that. Awesome. And those are some of the comments on uh, Facebook. And on Facebook, eyesight that's right. is really brilliant. Uh, uh, she, 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 she did that. She did that. But, uh, you know, with Anthony Porta, uh, good morning to you as well. Peter Erasmus also saying they're loving it and looking forward to all of it. But, uh, Tobias, let's get in on this because... Uh, one of the misconceptions, and uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry for, for asking this question, but I have to. Um, what are the general misperceptions of uh, the in uh, insurance industry is that they can't be trusted? You know, and, oh, yeah. and, and, and from that perspective, <laughs> oh, let, me, yeah. let me just sort of uh, say it this way. When you are needing to push on somebody's button mm -hmm. in your time of need, then insurance companies almost try to make it near impossible <laughs> for them to live up to their end of the bargain. <laughs> where I've been paying premiums every week, every month, or whatever I must do. And, and, and insurance industry has almost created a bad name for themselves. However, it is something that we need, but we've been paying. Why? And, and I don't want to paint you in a bad light, but I've got to put it out there. Like I look at insurance companies sometimes and I go, oh, they can't be trusted. No, there's... there's I think the biggest factor, and I mean, you can go to any insurance Facebook page and you'll definitely find the comment you fix. And of course, the perception comes from claims not paying out. So when it comes down to insurance is a contractual relationship between the client and the insurer. So in the insurance industry, the insurance industry itself is highly regulated and insurance can't subjectively select which claims they will pay and which claims they won't pay so okay. unfortunately what happens what happens in practice is insurance and brokers are required to make numerous disclosures uh, which leads to this vast amount of information that needs to be supplied to, to clients and the intention was to ensure that consumers are informed but in practice it actually has the opposite effect 
um, when you receive an email with 55 attachments, it deters you from reading your policy documentation. Yeah. And when you don't read, you won't understand. And then that willful ignorance is, is out because of conflict. Yeah. So I can understand that because, uh, I mean, how often do we actually read the fine print? Let me ask you this. Let me put mm. you a little bit on the spot. Do you really go through all of that small print with your clients as a broker? It, we need to supply them with, with all the information. So, of course, we are um, we, we are compelled to send them all mm. the, the exclusions and conditions. But I always look at the historical claim data, see why claims are rejected, and then go through the main stuff. Because we need to sit down and ensure that each client reads each word. It will take us a year for each policy because they wow. are very, very broad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and I was just going to say on the misconception as well, um, uh, Dougal and Toby, is the fact that I think you as a, as a client as well need to be informed as well. And, and I think that is where I enjoy a broker because, you know, once you have that relationship, it's a relationship that you know that has to be trusted. And this is the main word is trust. So I think you will not be um, frustrated as far as I'm concerned if you actually have a good broker because then like you're feeling, Dougal, that mistrust, it actually, for me, with my business, it kind of takes that away from me because I feel comfortable knowing that I am covered. Yeah. So um, I think that's where the broker comes in and the relationship comes in, that you don't yeah. have to feel that. So maybe some people experience as hasn't had a good broker or somebody they actually never built a relationship with. You know? yeah. So that's you, important. Do you, do you know what, uh, Tobias and, and Aroda, because here's the thing, a lot of people, and I'm, uh, I've, I've heard people say this, where they opt against insurance because it is something that you pay for. It's an encasement. Yeah. A what if? It, it is yeah. not written in stone, yeah. if I could put it this way. Exactly. But then in the beginning, you spoke about risk management. Now, yeah. when yeah. you have a business, mm. then there's no case of what if. Exactly. Because when the what if comes, mm. the writing's on the wall, it's tickets. It's exactly. done. There's no yeah. uh, what else do we do. So it becomes more essential than, than anything we, we, we've really had before. Mm, the, lung, the Lamborghini needs to be paid. Yeah. <laughs> The Lamborghini yeah. truck, for instance. If I can firstly um, extend what, what Rhoda said, is a broker, or this, this is the way that I perceive it, I can't speak for other brokers, is as soon as I'm a, a broker for a business, I'm an extension of that company. I'm exactly. almost like an employee, and you need to, to treat that business as if it's your own. You need uh, to make sure that, and once you have that relationship with your client, then they can trust your advice to start off with. And um, yes, you know, I think that is one of the key factors of, mm. of having a broker because it's just an extension of, of your company. Exactly. And what you, what you said, Google, risk management, having insurance, I think Anthony made a very good comment. It creates value within your business. Mm. A lot of, let's say, plumbers, for instance, can't get big contracts if they don't have liability cover in place. So it, it gives you that that um, credibility within your business as well and put you in a position to, to obtain bigger contracts to, yeah. to, to get more referral. So that's one of the other benefits of insurance as well. Yeah. Look, and, and I'm loving this because this is exactly why we got you on here. Because, oh, yeah. and, and especially, and, and we want to, we want to, we're getting close to the end as well, but we want to talk about the situation around the pandemic because, I mean, that is now obviously brought out rules mm. and things that that uh, i mean it's unparalleled we didn't know this mm. and and let's quickly go through that as well because i wanna i wanna ask you about insurable uh insurable and uninsurable risks i want you to define this but now i want to use the pandemic as a sort of background for this so firstly what what is something that is insurable and uninsurable risk what 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 give me an example what would that be okay so if i have to go academic on this then you need to make make sure that if the risk occur and that loss takes place, the loss in itself needs to be measurable in a monetary form. And you need to have an insurable interest in that loss, meaning you need to financially have suffered that loss. And then you need to distinguish between speculative risks, risks, those are your dynamic risks, and pure risks, your absolute risks. So with speculative, speculative risks, um, either profit or loss can be achieved. For example, gambling or betting. Um, speculative risks are uninsurable because the core principle of insurance of indemnity is you can't gain from it. Yeah. So fear risks, on the other hand, is either a chance of loss or no loss. 
Okay. So never a chance of gain. So for example, a building can either burn down or it's mm. not. So fewer risks in itself are insurable. All right. Yes. So if we go to, to and, and I can speak an hour about uh, the, the uh, Tobias, let me let me ask you this. Uh, Something that is probably more juggly. I mean, uh, I know you specialize in the short term thing, but maybe if because in my mind I'm thinking now agriculture, right? Because it either rained a lot or it didn't, and it's El Nino and El Nino and all of this, and the Rhoda didn't put the compost out, all, all of these things. I mean, does that become insurable, uninsurable risks? Because th 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 those are big gambles. Yeah, so basically you get a peril-based policy and an all-risk-based policy, commercial policy, which, which includes your agricultural policy. So the insurer tells you, I'll cover your, your asset for fire, storm, hail, all those perils. And then there's extensions that you can buy, <laughs> accidental damage, theft, um, your motor section. Ah. So unless you can qualify it in terms of your policy, mm. that risk will be insurable and covered. But trade risks in itself, um, if you forget to water your plant, that unfortunately will not be covered. Ah, come now. Yes. There we go. <laughs> there's so much we want to talk about and there's, there's so, so many comments there's as well a lot of comments. Uh, with us of course Tobias Stradrop from Octifund uh, who is a broker we're talking mm. all about uh, insurance today and short term insurance and one of the comments on her Facebook is from our Ida Corsa who says definitely loving the show normally I have to watch uh, the, the recording but uh, uh, due to classes but today i got to watch you guys live and all of that so uh, yeah lecker, lecker to have you on uh, thank you very much uh, for tuning in. Uh, there's a couple of more yeah, comments, Rhoda. That's right. I just wanted to go through to Hubert again. And he says, you don't buy life insurance because you're going to die, but because those you love are going to need to live. Wow. Beautiful Ooh. words, Hubert. That's beautiful. on the nose. That's yeah, definitely. And then we've got Peter Erasmus again. Trust comes from a good relationship with your broker and that he always does the best for you and will go out of his way for you as a client. Trust I've experienced at Octofin. Mm, and, and there we go. And there you Trust. have there you have a testament as well to buy. Almost definitely. Exactly from what Peter is saying. Exactly. 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 Yeah. Trust. Um, I think yeah, trust is, is the basic principle that uh, that a bro broker needs to that's yeah, it's it's critical for the sustainability of a brokerage to have that trust with your client. Yeah, yeah. No, it excellent, definitely excellent. sounds. Uh, I quickly want to ask you this because this is the one thing that people trust, and especially when it comes to price. Mm. Because right now, you open a newspaper, you listen mm. to TV, you watch any social media, you see any ad, it is about a, I want to call it a price war. Can mm. we call it that? Can call From it insurance that. companies mm. competing. They're like, I'll do this and then I'll throw this and then we'll mm. bring it out and then we'll have this. Mm. And, and, and all of this. How are you guys approaching this? How are you also part of this how how are you getting your message out yeah at the end of the day funny lippy just wants to watch sim and the lawn and every, <laughs> every second minute there's a there's an insurance and advertisement but you know what premium is a predictable marketing tool and it's probably the most effective way to get attention and rightfully so um i mean even i get nauseous when that debit order goes all for insurance mm. and especially in personal lines policies it is such a competitive market. We all want to pay the cheapest premium and have the, the best cover in place. But I think, believe it or not, insurers are not really interested in who you are, even though they may display your name on mm. TV. It's all about the profitability you post to them. So when you have a high claims ratio with a high frequency of claims and you pay a low premium, you run the risk of having your insurance canceled. And when that happens, it's an absolute nightmare a nightmare of finding an insurer that's willing to accept that risk. So I think another benefit of a broker is we need to manage these ratios and importantly keep our clients insurable. And that that's not the message that, that you always hear on an advertisement. Yeah. Yeah. She was no, it's, it's well put, sir. Very well put. So uh, just quickly, so the clients out there, we've got our businesses listening to you now. There's clients listening out there now at the moment. Um, what can they expect from Octofin? Octofin. Well, Octofin is, our model is focused on personal service. Um, as I've said before, we are privileged to have some of the most caring employees. And most importantly, we we'll operate as a collective, ensuring that we have 
specialists in the various fields and those specialists are accessible for clients that require the additional service. If I can use a practical example, let's say I have a, a short-term insurance client and this guy is looking to make an investment or for medical aid, then I can refer him within our company to a specialist that uh, works on that. Uh, mm. Because the jack of all trade models has been phasing up for a long time and we've also identified this as an opportunity to ensure that we are a one-stop financial services, but with an expert in each sector. Yeah. Oh, and, and, and I suppose that is the, the, the important thing. And, and Tobias, in, in closing, obviously with, 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 the, with the pandemic and all of this, this has definitely changed uh, the, the, the terrain, the way people look at insurance and, of course, the way insurance is offered. And tying in with what Rhoda said, I mean, how, how was it? I mean, how, how was it for you guys? Because uh, what Rhoda also said, what can clients expect? Because mm -hmm. during that time when things went really, oh, yeah. ooh, I'm sure it was a, was a bit of a hectic few months. It still Definitely. is. Um, do you really are, I think it was all panic stations, but we had a strategy in place um, prior to the lockdown. And we really acted proactively. And we were privileged enough to have an amazing client base. And our retention rate during that period was amazing. But we contacted them prior and see where we can save premium, what's not necessary when you are in lockdown, especially cars can be moved to a third party fire and theft. You don't need to pay a comprehensive premium for that. Um, I think the product providers also stick to the plate. Some gave premium discounts, some gave premium holidays, and um, I can also thank them. I think the big insurers especially, um, even though the COVID payment is always going to be a point of contention and that's a discussion on its own, I think they really stepped up to the plate and and enforced our hand as a broker to, to help our clients and, and to keep business in, yeah. that, in that time. Yeah. Oh, listen, just, thank yeah, you so much, man. Sorry, just on that before we end the show quickly. And I think the importance of that as well is the fact that you know that a lot of clients just says just cancel 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 but in actual fact like you say you can actually just look at it and say let's reduce this let's take this down so that they're not completely isolated and not insured um you know and i love that especially now with the COVID times um where people financially obviously didn't have the funds necessarily to cover everything um you know and i like that about uh, the fact that you guys actually had implemented or even added before yeah. COVID eq <laughs> yeah well done well done <laughs> and, and to buy is because I, and i want to end with this this is really my final question because I know we spoke about risk, uh, risk assessment and uh, the management thereof, and especially we, which is your field of expertise. But there might be somebody who's got a food truck or something, and they're not really sure what is their thing. This is why they speak to you, because you will assess their risk. So even me, as a potential client, I've got no idea why I want to be insured. Mm -hmm. I think it's the right thing to do. This is why I speak to you, because you can highlight these pitfalls for me and, of course, look at uh, all the things that I need, right? 100%. So what we do is we can do a, a proper needs analysis. We can make sure that you can have two of the same businesses, but their needs differ mm. completely. So uh, two cupcake shops can be underwritten on two different ways. And we need to make sure that the client's profile and his needs match the product that we, that we provide and we advise on. So it's really a ta tailored solution for, for each client. Yeah. That, that is brilliant, sir. Thank you so much uh, for being with us, uh, Tobias. Uh, it was an absolute oh, pleasure speaking definitely. to you because i, I got to be honest with you. When we started the show, we were like, it's the enemy, it's the insurance. <laughs> but yeah, man, you're a friend, man. You're He's a friend. A I take all oh, of that bad fun, thoughts man. back. <laughs> I'm joking. I never had any. Uh, <laughs> I was just joking. But listen, sir, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for, for, for really highlighting the things. And, uh, and, and, and speaking the truth, and, uh, and, and I'm sorry oh, to yeah. say it is sometimes the industry, because we're all in difficult situations. Because let's be honest, you don't phone the insurance company or your broker when things are going, hey, you phone them when you are in... You know where. <laughs> That's when you speak to the, you know what I mean? So it is, and, 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 and this is sometimes the difficulty. But uh, thank you very much uh, for, 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 for making sense of all of this and, and really highlighting some amazing things. And we, oh, wish yeah. you we wish you all the best. And uh, your business sounds uh, really fantastic. And uh, hopefully people will contact Octopher. Thanks, Tobias. They will, they will. <laughs> thank you very much for the, for the privilege. And I hope you guys do well. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Tobias Radom, everybody. He's with our Octofin. Yes, they are a registered financial services provider. And uh, he, he's more on the short-term insurance, but uh, life insurance, they, they come aid, in investment, oh, yeah. long-term insurance, agricultural sector, it is all there. Rona, there's so mm. many things he spoke about. Because I, I know I said it in jest that sometimes mm. we look at insurance, we go, eh, eh, eh. but... It is something of trust. You have personal experience. Exactly. In, in, in all of this. That is true. And, and in my case, Dougal, I mean, oh, I'm in constant chatting with our broker on a constant, you know, how you doing? Is everything fine? So it's not that case when we're in trouble, he really just stays yeah. in contact. And this is where you know that you've got a good broker. So it's not really that case when you actually, when the fan or whatever hits a fan, that's just not yeah. the only time they actually get in contact with you. And, and, this is a, and this for me personally is where you as a person that's actually getting a broker need to see where that relationship is at. And that's what it is. It is in a relationship. Yeah. If it's, it's exactly the same. If it's just one-sided, then obviously something is wrong. It needs to come from both sides. And that's what your broker is, a relationship from both sides. Yeah. And you know what? There's so many things you said there. Right? He spoke about it at length. It is trust. It is sort oh, of yeah. tailor-making. Uh, whatever the product is for exactly. you. Exactly. So it doesn't matter the size of your business, the scale of your business, where you want exactly. to be with your business. It is definitely a case. Mm -hmm. When it comes to assessing your risk, you need to talk to Tobias. Exactly. His name is Tobias Stradom. Easy to get in touch with him. You can uh, go visit their website, which is www.octofin.co.za. Nice. And uh, we will have that on the screens for you as well. So uh, very, very easy. www dot octofin.co.za there's also a telephone number that uh, you can be in touch and, and there's email. Tobias's email which is Tobias at octofinsa.coza as That's easy right. as that is there one or two comments that we want to do Rona? yeah I've got two comments and I think we can end the show off for these last two comments so the last two comments is from Hubert and Peter and Hubert says nothing is more important than your life as your ability to earn a living so it makes good sense to ensure your greatest asset, which is you. Wow. wow. Beautifully said, Hubert. Hubert well is on fire. Hubert's always on fire. Always, But always. he's like extra on fire. Extra, extra. And then we've got Peter Rasmus. <laughs> I heard that one. Then we've got Peter Rasmus. Thank you, Octopin, for your, for your brokers that help us to understand the detail of our insurance. There you go. And, That's and exactly that, it. That is a brilliant testament there exactly. for Peter. Peter, thank you very thank you, much. Peter. Because the proof is in the pudding, and that is the comments we want to hear. Exactly. You want to hear that, that, that like, like you said, it's a developing thing all the time. It's a fluid situation, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. let's be honest, when you phone an insurance broker to claim something, you are not, <laughs> nobody, you know, you, you're a bit annoyed. So true. But <laughs> imagine <laughs> phoning Octofin because you are happy it's Octofin. That's exactly, and they'll sort out all your problems. That's what it's about. <laughs> Once again, thank you very much to Tobias Stradov, who was with us here this morning, and it was absolutely brilliant to talk to him. Thank you very much for all the comments and uh, the wisdom shared uh, on this program this morning, and it was an absolute pleasure. And uh, definitely, that is a, a great, uh, if it doesn't matter what the size of your business is, but there, the, the products are certainly there for you. So you oh, simply yeah. just go to octofin.co.za to go check out whatever it is that they offer. That's it from us, Rona. That's it from us, Dougal. Everybody, have a fabulous week. We'll see you soon. Cheers, everybody.